Hey everybody, it's InnoVision, and we've got an exciting video prepared for you today. We're going to show you how to upgrade your SSD on your ROG Ally X, and we're going to show you how to reinstall Windows. Now we provide a link for this amazing drive in the description of our video, and if you use our link, I want to note that as an Amazon associate, we'll receive a small commission without affecting the price you pay. I would like to take a moment to thank our friends over at Fanjang SSD for sending us this S880 Pro Level NVMe SSD that we use for the installation here today. Now this is one of the more exciting NVMe SSDs I've used in a little while. It offers a very competitive price per gigabyte relative to other drives in its class. It has an impressive read and write performance. It has even more impressive thermal characteristics. And on top of all that, they offer a five year warranty. Now we include a series of experiments and benchmarks at the end of this video to kind of illustrate some of the things we just talked about in terms of this drive's performance. So all you need to be able to install a new SSD in your ROG Ally X is the console itself, an SSD, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a pry tool. It's a really short list of materials. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is orient our ROG Ally X face down. And so in order to do this, I'm going to just use my carrying case, but you can actually use a soft cloth or kind of like a folded up t-shirt, just so you're not scratching the screen when you're laying it down. But for me, I'm just gonna lay it in these grooves here, just like it would be um, if I were carrying it. And I'm just gonna position it like this to make unscrewing the six screws in the back easier. So we'll take our Phillips head screwdriver and we're going to start unscrewing them one by one. The screw circled in red did not come out the first time I took apart my console. Also once the screw is loosened, the case will start to separate at the bottom. It's a good idea to save this screw for the last. After completely loosening the screw, go ahead and insert the pry tool into the gap that was formed. Now softly wiggle the pry tool all the way around the bottom and the two sides of the case. By the time we get to the top part of the case where the vents are, you shouldn't need a pry tool anymore and you can separate the case by hand. A ribbon cable is connected on the back half of the case and is used to connect the rear buttons to the main board. As you separate the case, take care not to create tension on this ribbon cable. Using a spudger or your fingernail, gently pull the battery connector's retaining clip towards you to release the battery from the main board. With the battery retaining clip pulled forward, you'll be able to lift the battery connector straight up. Once the battery connector has been removed, now you can unscrew the one screw holding in the NVMe SSD. Once the screw has been removed, now you can gently wiggle the NVMe SSD until it is removed. Woohoo! We've removed the SSD! Alright, so we've got our Fanjang SSD ready to be installed. And so we're just gonna go under the battery cable and we're just gonna come in at a slight angle and you should slide it in until you hear a small click or a snap. There we go, and it snapped in. And now we're ready to reinstall the mounting screw. With our mounting screw back in place, we can install the battery clip. So we'll just follow the reverse instructions for removing it. And now I'm pushing the retaining clip back into place for the battery plug. Now when you're pushing the battery plug back in, make sure it goes all the way down so you don't hit any resistance on the retaining clip. There we go, the retaining clip's back in. We're good, you should see 
two small teeth right here. One right there and one right there in the middle of the clip. All right. So with everything back into place, we can actually go ahead and snap the case back on. So be careful that the ribbon cable doesn't get pinched. Just go ahead and lay it back into place and you can attach it back on and you can start snapping it back down. All right, now we've got the back back on. We've made sure that the ribbon cable is free from getting snagged. We can go ahead and start snapping the case back on. And I would actually start from the top part because see where it's kind of like got these vents here. These are a little bit harder to get on if you get the bottom part snapped on first. So starting up here, we're just going to lightly snap it into place until it snaps in. And then we're going to work our way around the edges, continuing to snap the case back on. And it looks like it's all the way on. I'm just going around, just pressing everywhere, make sure it's snapped back in. And so now that looks good. We're gonna go ahead and put all the screws back in the appropriate holes. And remember, this one's the shortest screw right here. I know you've been eyeing my toy of the day, and what we have here is lion -O from Thundercats, made by Super 7. Now this is just amazing. I love the art on this box, and right away I'm taken back by the difference this action figure has compared to earlier Super 7 Ultimates of lion -O. You know, this is the first one where I feel like the color palette more closely matches the colors that we've seen in the cartoon. Now you won't believe this, my wife found this one in store. It has been many, many moons since we've seen Thundercats toys on store shelves and it was a sight to be seen. Now you know we're about to have some fun with this. We're gonna open this bad boy up. Thunder, 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 Thundercats, ho! of omens give me sight beyond sight so now with the console plugged into the power we're going to turn it on but while we're turning it on we're going to be tapping the volume down button this is going to allow us to enter the bios where we can do a couple things we're going to verify that the ssd is installed properly from there we can actually run the cloud recovery tool to go ahead and reinstall windows this time it should show us all right and so we're in the BIOS recovery utility. Okay, and we see the two terabyte Fanjang S880 Pro drive. Very good. So now we're gonna go into the advanced mode And then we're going to select advanced and see how we have these options here. It's really nice actually. One of the things I like about this BIOS is that you can actually use the controller to navigate the menus. That's really nice. I wish other gaming handhelds had this implemented. So you see this option right here, Asus Cloud Recovery. We're going to go ahead and select that one. So it's going to say, can't connect to the network. So you're going to have to actually find your Wi-Fi and connect to it. Let me type my password in. All right, so the password's typed in. And now we're going to go ahead and hit confirm. OK. 
connection was successful. Okay, so it's ready to download some instructions on how to reformat the drive. So remember, since we've installed a new solid state drive, there's no operating system yet on the system. You could, however, clone the drive, but by default, the ASUS ROG Ally X comes with BitLocker enabled, and that actually makes things a little bit complicated in terms of cloning drives. I find it simpler for me just to reinstall everything. I mean, typically you're not going through this that often. So the cloud recovery tool found a new update, it downloaded it, and now it's updating. Alright, so it's asking us if we want to back up any files, and the answer is no because we just installed a brand new drive. Are you sure? Yes. Alright, so now it's going to download the files it needs to install Windows. This is going to take a little while, we'll be back once it's finished. So once the cloud recovery packages are done downloading, you'll see the Windows installer boot up several times. The device will reboot many times during this process. Just let it keep rolling. After about an hour of downloading and rebooting, depending on your internet connection, your ROG Ally X will be back into its factory condition, just like it was brand new when you first bought it. And so at this point, you would just set up your device like it was brand new, and you're all set. Congratulations. Here we have everything loaded up before doing any benchmarks, just so we can take note what the ambient temperatures are of the system. And here we have the results of the benchmark along with the temperatures. Notice all of the benchmarks are looking great. You know, we're staying at or near the advertised speeds. And also the temperatures don't go up too high. So keep in mind, this is a synthetic test that's continuously pegging the system with reads and writes. Here we take a closer look at the drive temperatures before and after running Crystal Disk Mark. From left to right, we have the current temperature, the minimum temperature, the maximum temperature, and the average temperature. The first two rows here are NAND hotspot temperatures, and the third row is the ASIC controller's temperature. Here an ASIC controller is like a primitive CPU used for executing operations on the disk. Now Crystal Disk Mark is more like a synthetic test in that it's kind of testing the worst case scenario. It's like a torture test. It continuously pegs the drive with reads and writes. And so it gives us a, you know, what the performance could look like at best, you know, with a sustained read and write operation, but also it gives us kind of the worst case scenario in terms of thermals. You know, after running our Crystal Disk Mark test, we run some real world benchmarks. Here we queue up about a third of a terabyte of video game downloads after a 30 minute gameplay session. Downloads in Steam are a little bit intense on the system because they work the CPU when the data is being verified. But more importantly, it creates many upon many write operations on the disk after performing large allocations of space needed for storing the game. And right after that, the CPU is used to verify the consistency of the data, which requires the data being read from disk again. And so that's a really good real world test. And so here we can see the temperatures are hardly budging at all during this test. And you know, this to me is very pleasing and I'm very impressed with this kind of performance. So the only thing that my tests are unable to capture here is anything related to the longevity of the drive. If I notice any deterioration over time or any issues, I'll be sure to post an update. Now be sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all the latest tips, tricks, and mods we've got coming down the pipeline.